Nothing had, this is in September, October of 66, uh, because I had written the first disclosure documents uh, about video games on 1 September 66. By early 1967, Bayer and Harrison had begun developing the first chassis with transistors in it. It was a big chassis into which we put some elementary circuitry for moving through spots around the screen so they could chase each other and wipe out the chase spot like a fox and hounds game. Bear's idea was to make chase games where a light beam emanating from a pencil-sized projector would try to hunt down a moving dot on the screen. And that's how the world's first optic sensor was invented. First you color a spot, then, then you, you change the game rules and use a different overlay on the screen to make a different game. It was all very primitive, but the idea was to build something simple and cheap that you can sell for $25. Right. And in order to do that, we couldn't have a hell of a lot of components. Understandably, Bear and Harrison's work attracted the attention of their co-workers at Sanders, and soon their superiors were asking them for a demonstration of their secret project. We, we couldn't blow this one. We had to do a perfect demonstration. To make sure, I bought a tape recorder, and I recorded the descriptions of each game. There were seven games altogether. Each game, so we could play it and build built a little four and a half megahertz FM oscillator. I showed them how to do it because I'm an old radio frequency guy from way back when. And you, you put the audio into this, into this oscillator, which makes an FM signal. You add that, sum that with a video signal, and it comes out in your television set right through your loudspeaker. So when the, uh, the president and the executive VP, my boss, came to see the demonstration, um, push the button on the tape recorder and says, game number one is a chase game, blah, 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 blah. So we knew we weren't going to blow the introductions and the demonstration. And when you see the replica built downstairs, you find that you can push a button, you know, and out comes a verbal introduction to the game. So the first time in the history of video games, we had video games that were introduced uh, by voiceover. The so board of directors had been in session that day. So instead of having the president and, and the, uh, the VP, the executive VP, uh, was surrounded, we were surrounded by about six or eight guys. And after we finished the demonstration, most of them were like, like this, you know. A couple of them said, hey, keep it up. Uh, Royden Sanders, the president, all he said was, uh, show me how we can make money <laughs> off, <laughs> off this. So we knew we had to do something. Going hardware designing circuitry, if that's your trade, that's not so hard, right? Yeah. Selling this stuff, or getting it on a license, that's the hard part. And that's why, like we said earlier today, the, the, the marketeers drive around in Cadillacs, and us engineers, we drive Fords, right? <laughs> Toyotas. The next step was to make their gadget appealing to consumers. The brown box with its controller was the first finished prototype that allowed the user to control an image, which makes it the ancestor of the PlayStation, the Nintendo, and the Xbox 360. Well, I'll, uh, I have to give Bill full, full credit for whatever physical things were done, he did them. And I don't know whether I, I probably suggested that we dress the brown box up, but I bet it was you went to the store and bought some uh, self-adhesive paper right. to the board of directors and the president of the company. That was a chassis f full of parts, discrete transistors, resistors, capacitors, uh, all of which Bill designed. He did all the design work. As we went on to the little box that was supposed to be a product that got to be too expensive, again, what was on the three plug-in cars were discrete transistors. Yes, we played with early integrated circuits, you know, the kind of thing where there's lots of transistors on one chip in a package. But uh, the problem was twofold. First of all, they were too expensive back then. And secondly, they drew too much current. Uh, he built circuitry by using a copper clad, the kind of stuff you make printed circuit out of, and sticking little insulated, uh, soldering little insulated stand-offs on it and supporting all the transistors and resistors 
off those insulated standoffs. Bear recognizes that Harrison also created the light gun. He went to see us, bought a plastic gun, opened it up, you know, made some room for the circuit board, built some hardware, stuck it inside, put a photo sensor in the barrel, and the optics were in the barrel, there was no lens. And it's just, you know, when you look through a long barrel, you get a small view of, of, uh, of the distance. And so we had a dark screen, and if there was a white spot on the screen, that's what the gun imaged, yeah. You know? And out, there was an output from the photo cell. He built an amplifier that made the signal bigger. And if you pull the trigger and the light from the photo cell and the trigger signal were coincident, at that moment, you had a hit, yeah. Yep, the spot would disappear. Bingo. So the next job was to take that big chassis and take those things that work pretty well, put them into a little box, which was TV game number three. It had three plug-in boards inside and two knobs on each side to move two spots around and a little handgun to shoot at the screen with, a light gun. And when we got done, Bill did a bill of materials and priced it as best we knew how. And what did we know about pricing commercial product? Nothing. The missing element to Bear and Harrison's game was supplied by a third person. Engineer Bill Rash inserted a third dot, controlled by the computer. Now the challenge was complete, since this third element was independent of the player's commands. Soon this dot became the ball in field games, like baseball, handball, volleyball, basketball, tennis, and ping pong. Once we had a ping pong game going, we knew we were in business. Here again, once we built the first ping pong game, the question was, now that I got it, what do I do with it? How, where do I go? Who will build this thing? <laughs>